Hi guys, it's Talish. I know I promised an episode last week, but I ended up taking time over the holidays to fix the noise in my videos and dragging the center rig down to my basement. I also spent about $80 on light bulbs and sketchy plugs to create this fire hazard I call my dedicated set. As thanks for your patience, today's episode is going to be a bit more in depth and feature all sorts of fun things like better slides, university pub stories, and maybe another mini rant. Anyway, on to business. We're changing up the topics a bit and going to dig into some very timely information. SHA-1 Science Certificates. In our first two episodes, we looked at SSL Labs and solved some easy problems. There are a couple problems that may have showed up in your report that you cannot solve on your server. To fix these, you'll need to get a new certificate. Incidentally, getting a new certificate in 2016 entails some new rules. We're going to look at those rules today and dig a bit deeper to understand why they're necessary. I had personally forgot about these until I came across this blog post from Google a couple weeks ago. Basically, Google is talking about SHA-1 signed certificates and blocking them in Chrome. And they're firing a couple shots across the bow of website owners. So what is this SHA-1 signature thing and how does it fit into the equation? We already spoke about encryption protocols and cipher suites. Well, this is where we get into the intricacies of how TLS encryption works. Remember, our secure protocol had to provide secrecy, integrity, and authenticity. Everything we've done till now has dealt with the secrecy and integrity parts of the equation, making sure that we're using solid protocols and cipher suites. Certificates are the mathematically generated keys that enable this encryption. Technically, once you have a valid certificate, any valid certificate, you can use it to encrypt data on your connection. Remember this for later. Since mathematics is such a wonderful thing, we can also use certificates to help us establish trust, which is the same as our last friend here, authenticity. Authenticity relies on a certificate vouching for your identity. You can think of it like this. A certificate is like a driver's license, which establishes trust to whoever's viewing it that you are who you say you are. But wait, how can your website prove it is who it says it is after a customer's connected to it? I mean, it could be a man in the middle who presents any certificate to the browser, identifying as your website saying, yeah, let's do this encryption thing, it's safe. Are you confused yet? Here's a real world analogy. I moved to Canada as a teenager for university. One year after exams, I made a snap decision. You know what, I'm gonna join the guys at the pub. But being an international student, I only had this as my proof of my age. It's a Trinidad and Tobago driver's license. This was my legitimate certificate, which establishes trust that I am who I say I am. And I was also old enough to enter the pub. However, the person at the door had never seen this type of certificate before. And how could he be sure that this was an ID he could trust? This is exactly how it works for a customer connecting to an encrypted site for the first time. The customer gets a certificate where you claim to be who you are. Example, euroflorist.se. But the customer needs a way to figure out if it trusts the certificate it got from you. Also, any method it uses to establish trust of your certificate needs to be trusted also, and so on and so forth. Yep, this rabbit hole goes down a long way. We even have a name for it. It's called the chain of trust problem. We also have a solution for it. I wouldn't call it a flawless solution, but we're gonna work within it as best as we can. And you know what? Tweet me if you really wanna see me go into full rant mode about my problems with a solution. Anyway, back to the solution. The solution for the chain of trust problem is called certificate signing. And the main players here are companies called certificate authorities. The way this works is that certificate authorities put their neck on the line and are willing to vouch for your server's identity by digitally signing your certificate using some complicated math. In turn, the customer's browser or operating system vouches for those companies and blindly accepts any certificates that it can mathematically confirm as being signed by a certificate authority. Typically, you pay for the service and you'll get a certificate from the authority that vouches for your identity. Remember, it also encrypts your data. A certificate can be used for encryption whether it's signed by a certificate authority or not. But when it is signed, the customer can be reasonably sure they're talking to the right server. So, five minutes into this video and we finally get to certificate signatures, so what does SHA-1 have to do with this? Because the calculations for creating signatures from full certificates are expensive, the certificate authorities first calculate a quick hash of the certificate. 
and signed a much shorter hash instead. The assumption is that no two certificates will have the same hash, so signatures sent out based on the hash would be unique. When the browser gets your signed certificate, they also calculate the hash of it. Then they use their inbuilt trust of the certificate authority to verify that it was legitimately signed by one of them. They can now be reasonably sure that you are who you say you are, completing the chain of trust and allowing you into the pub. I mean, and allowing an encrypted session to begin. For the record, I did get into the pub that night because the owner intervened, gave the bouncer a dusty catalog showing some sample cards from around the world. And since the owner said to trust the catalog, and his catalog said that he could trust my ID, and my ID said that I am who I claim to be, he let me in. The same way your customer's operating system, the owner, tells your browser it can trust the certificate authorities, the catalog, and the certificate authorities tells it that it can trust your signed certificate, your ID. And your certificate says your server is the URL it claims to be. An encrypted session is established. I hope I didn't lose you anywhere there. Feel free to rewind and replay. It's a lot of moving parts, I know. And hopefully the crude graphics and silly analogy makes sense. So back to the blog post. Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla are all chomping at a bit to drop support for certificates signed with the SHA-1 hash. This is because researchers are close to establishing a full collision on SHA-1. When we have a full collision on SHA-1, that means we can create two certificates that has the same SHA-1 hash, and hence the same signature. This means that someone can forge a certificate that will have a hash collision with your legitimate certificate and have the forgery fully accepted by an operating system because its hash and its signature checks out just like the original. Back to my analogy. If the security features of my driver's license were weak enough, it would be simple for me to Photoshop one indistinguishable from the real one, and the bouncer would happily let me in because he only trusts the catalog which established that my fake ID was legit. I hope my real world analogy is still working here. Let's pretend someone up to no good has already broken SHA-1. And there is precedent for this, as MD5 was broken by nation states and used to forge certificates in the past. So, someone has broken SHA-1 and is forging certificates today. Due to the nature of man-in-the-middle attacks, the browser only sees certificates that the man-in-the-middle sends them. And if that certificate can legitimately impersonate one from your server, the game is over. Microsoft and Google have even said that they're interested in dropping support as soon as mid-2016 instead of waiting upon the agreed January 1st, 2017. So if after the last couple episodes you've realized that your certificate is SHA-1 signed, it's important that you get one signed with SHA-2 or better. The vast majority of certificate authorities out there will provide you an SHA-2 signed certificate, mainly because they needed to stop doing SHA-1 as of January 1st, 2016. But for some inexplicable reason, there are outliers that do stupid things. And I'm not gonna say who's leading the pack here. I just want you to be aware of them. And you know it, we're getting to that point in the podcast where I give you a convenient link to take care of all the rambling I've been doing for the last 10 minutes. And you'll want to use my link shortener for this one. HTTP colon slash slash T-A-L-E dot S-H slash SHA dash check, which takes you to SHA.com. Here you'll be able to test your certificate and see the few outlier certificate authorities that make you jump through some hoops to get your new certificate signed with SHA-2 or better. Okay, that's it for today. I know this one was a bit heavy and long, so I'm going to stick to a short ending. Take care, guys, and have a happy new year.